Hey there, people of the internet. About three years ago, I made a video of me tr booting off of a floppy disk to be able to run Linux off of a flash drive on my old compact Presario machine. Now, this old machine, obviously, did not have the ability to directly boot off of a flash drive. So, that's why we used the floppy drive. Or floppy disk, I should say. Now, in the three years of since making this video, or, you know, two years and some odd months, I've gotten a lot of questions, mainly being, how do we make this disk? So, guess what we're going to talk about in this video today? How you can make a plop boot floppy disk, and then boot off of it. So, for starters, you need to go to their website. Now, I will provide a link down in the description, or you can do this magical thing called Use Google. Ooh, aha, Google. <clears throat> but once, we, once you go to there, you want to go... So once you get to this page, we're going to need to go to Boot Managers. And believe it or not, there's two things we're going to need to grab. Well, we're going to need to grab our boot image, which is similar to an ISO for those who are familiar with ri ripping ISOs to flash drives. And we're going to need a program to write the image. Now, currently, as of October 20th, I'm sorry, October 20th, 2020, which is which when I'm recording this, they are... They have uh, Boot Manager 5, which is the current version, and they are working on a test version of Boot Manager 6. So, <clears throat> if you're watching this in the not-so-distant future, they've probably, there's a good chance they've probably finished with this, and they have a full version. But for now, it's a test, for now, it's just a test version. And I will be showing you how to write both images to a floppy disk. So for starters, let's go to version 5. Now, there's two things we need to get. We need to get our images, and we need to get our program to write it. Now, obviously, the image is under the download section. But if we go to this section here, you know, the live CD and other ways to start the boot manager, that's where we're going to be able to get the program to actually write write it to our floppy disk. Now again, they give you a quick little instruction set, little little instruction page. <clears throat> now, this time around, we'll be talking how to install it on Windows. And in a future video, we'll be talking about how to install it on Linux using the dd command. <laughs> But for now, we would, you know, click on this, and it will download it, and it will download the raw write program for Windows, which I have downloaded right here, or I should say I've already downloaded right there, and we're going to want to download the latest version of our boot manager. <laughs> which is right here under their download sections. Which, guess what? I've already downloaded right here. Now once you download it, you can extract the files, and we'll go to this. So in the files that they have extract, that we extracted and that they provide, they not only provide documentation, but they provide a couple different ways to actually write it. So if you really wanted to use it instead of maybe the boot manager for Windows or I think it's Grub for Linux, you could actually replace it, uh, the Plop boot manager. And again, they give you the files and everything to do that and instructions and so on and so forth. But mainly what we're looking at today is, guess what, how to write it to a floppy disk. So we're going to be using this floppy image. Now this image is set up for a three and a half high density floppy drive. As you can see, it's 
roughly about 1.44 megabytes. They also do provide an ISO and a binary file for it, <clears throat> which I bet you you could use to write to a maybe a five and a quarter inch drive or a double density three and a half inch drive, because again, you know the five and a quarters uh, they make a 360k and a 1.2 megabyte, and the uh, double density are a 720 kilobytes. But, again, much smaller than this. And also, it's probably going to be a lot harder to set this up because you would have to probably link the bin file to the, uh, the, the MBR of the disk and all that wonderful stuff. But it probably is possible. But, again, for today, we're going to be just looking at the, the uh, image for the one uh, high density three and a half inch drive. So going back, we'll load our program. Now, for those who are familiar with writing ISOs to a flash drives, believe it or not, it's a very similar process. You have an image, so instead of writing an ISO, you write an image, and instead of, you know, using a program to write the ISO to a flash drive, like there's uh, Rufus, and there's Netboot, and for our Linux people, there is Yummy, and I think even at one point, Windows came out with one for their own version, uh, for their own Windows ISOs, but, but instead, we're going to use this program here called RawWrite that is going to write the image to a floppy disk. So you notice here, and again, just like you write with writing an ISO, you would select your flash drive and you would select your image. But this time around, we're going to select our floppy drive, which is we're going to start with A today because that's the internal one I have actually on my computer. We're going to make sure it's set to write. <clears throat> and we're going to select our floppy image. Now, I'll hit write. And if you receive an error like this, this means, guess what? You need to put a disk in your computer or add a problem writing. So, I'll pop a disk in. And if you give get an if you hit write and you get an error 32, that means, believe it or not, you need to actually format your drive because it does not have enough space to write the information to it. So I will hit OK. I'll pop this one out and put in another blank and put in a blank floppy disk. So the key point to note is it needs to be blank. And we'll hit write. And I don't know if you hear it starting writing in the background. I don't know how well my mic's picking that up. Maybe if I move it. But you can hear it writing. And you can see here at the bottom, you know, there's the percentage of where it's at. <clears throat> so we'll give this another couple seconds. And again, basically, once this is done writing, you can exit out of the program and eject the disk. And then use it for wherever you, whatever computer or whatever drive you want to use it on. So there you go. It got to 100. We're going to wait for the little green light on the floppy drive to go out. To make sure it is 100% done writing. It is. And we hit exit. So that's basically how we can write our... Uh, to a floppy drive, or flop, yeah, floppy disk, I should say. I keep wanting to say drive. How we can write to a floppy disk. But, as I mentioned earlier, there's not only version 5, there's a test version of 6. So again, we'll go back to our boot manager. And we'll open up version 6. We'll go to downloads. 
and we'll go to the download page. And obviously, we will download the latest version. And just like we did before, <clears throat> I already have it downloaded here. You know, right click, extract all. Here's our files. Now, again, they give you a couple different versions. You know, they give you even one for people who are blind. Sadly, there is not a floppy image. But today, we'll be using the default one. And just like we did with version 5, we'll open up this. But just for fun, let me put one in my B drive, which is a internal drive, but with a USB adapter. And we'll say B. Select right. And we will find our image and write it with version 6 and once again we will hit write once again the disk is not blank let me get a blank disk and we will hit write So, basically, that's how it's done. All you have to do is just sit back, wait for this to finish writing to a disk, and guess what? You're done. And that's basically how you can write both Plop version 5 and Plop version 6 to floppy disks. And once again, people of the internet, I thank you for watching.